Hey everybody, my name is Chris and I'm a tutor here at Chegg.com. I mostly do math and a little bit of computer science. And in this video, we're going to do an example of using the Laplace transform to solve a differential equation. So the very first thing that we want to do is just take the Laplace transform of both sides. And because the Laplace transform is a linear operator, that's going to give us the Laplace transform of the derivative plus 3 times the Laplace transform of y equals 13 times the Laplace transform of sine of 2x. Okay, now the Laplace transform of y primed, that's going to be s times capital Y of s is the notation we're going to use, uh, minus y of 0, and y of 0 is just 6, and then uh, l of y is just going to be y of s, and then uh, we also have the 3 out there, and then the Laplace transform of sine of 2x from, uh, we're just going to use tables of formulas here, so we're not going to calculate any Laplace transforms with the integrals, because uh, the process that we have to do is lengthy enough, so we're just going to use the tables here. And if we look at a table, we see that because we have sine of 2x, this is going to be uh, 2 over s squared plus 2 squared, which is 4. And then don't forget about the 13 out here. So the equation then becomes s y of s minus 6 from the y of 0. Uh, and this y of 0 is just the same thing as our initial condition here. Okay, um, And then we have plus 3 y of s equals 13 times 2 over s squared plus 4, so that's going to be 26 over s squared plus 4 is what we're going to have there. Okay, so now we just want to solve for y of s. So this is s plus 3 times y of s equals 6 plus 26 over s squared plus 4. All right, now what we want to do is, let's go ahead and go to the next page now. Well, before that, we can actually write this as uh, 6s squared plus 4 over s squared plus 4 plus 26 over s squared plus 4. Okay, so we're just getting a common denominator there. So let's go ahead and go to the next page now. And so far we have s plus 3 times y of s equals, now if we were to expand this out, we're going to have 6s squared plus 6 times 4 is 24, 24 plus 26 is 50, all divided by s squared plus 4. Now finally we divide both sides by s plus 3 and we get y of s equals 6 s squared plus 50 divided by s plus 3 times s squared plus 4. Okay, now we have to use partial fractions to split this up. So this is going to be a, let's uh, fix that. This is a over s plus 3 plus, now because s squared plus 4 cannot be factored over the real numbers, what we're going to have is bs uh, plus c over s squared plus 4. All right, so we're going to focus on just this equation here focus on this equation here. So what we're going to have then is, um, let's go ahead and take this equation, multiply both sides by this entire denominator. So then what we're going to have is 6s squared plus 50 equals, now if we multiply this entire right hand side by this entire denominator, then in this term the s plus 3's will cancel and we'll be left with uh, a times s squared plus 4. And here we have plus bs plus c. Now again, if we multiply the entire right-hand side by this entire denominator, then the s squared plus uh, the s squared plus four factors are going to cancel, and we'll be left with bs plus c times s plus three. Okay, so just a plain old partial fraction decomposition here. Now we want to solve for a, b, and uh, and c. So what we can do here is because this expression is an identity in s, it's true for every value of s, no matter what value of s that we use, we can actually use good values of s uh, to help us find a, b, and c. So let's plug in s equals negative 3. So if we let s be negative 3, then we're going to get, uh, well this term is going to completely go to 0, right? Negative 3 plus 3 is 0, so this is all gone. And that's good, because then we have 6 times negative 3 squared 
plus 50 equals a times negative 3 squared plus 4. Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 times 6 is 54. 54 plus 50 is 104. And then over here we have a times what? Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 4 is 13. So 104 equals a times 13. So a is 104 divided by 13. Whoops. 104 divided by 13. And let's see. Uh, oops, 13. All right, so I don't believe that could be simplified any further. Let's go ahead and double check that real quick. Um, 104 divided by 13. Oh, good, 8. All right, that's that makes a lot more sense. Uh, equals 8. So uh, a is 8. Now what about b and c? So let's go ahead and go to the next page. So far we have 6s squared plus 50 equals 8 times s squared plus 4 plus bs plus c times s plus 3. Okay, now um, what we could do, there are a couple different ways we could approach this. We could expand everything on the right hand side and then equate uh, the powers of s or we could plug in some more values of s to see if we can solve for b and c. So what we're uh, going to want to do is let's go ahead and let s be well, yeah, let's go ahead and let s be uh, negative 2. Now, if s is negative 2, then we're going to have 6 times negative 2 squared plus 50 equals 8 times negative 2 squared plus 4 plus b times negative 2 plus c times negative 2 plus 3. All right. So on the left-hand side, we have negative 2 squared is 4. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 plus 50 is 74. And uh, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 times 8 is 64. And uh, here we're going to have negative 2b plus c times uh, the quantity negative 2 plus 3. But this is just 1. So really all we have here is minus 2b plus c. So let's go ahead and simplify that. So we have minus 2b plus c. So let's subtract 64 from both sides, and then we end up with 10 equals, let's actually write this over here. We end up with 10 equals uh, c minus 2b. All right, now let's go ahead and plug in another value of, of s. Let's go ahead and say we're gonna use s equals uh, negative four. So if s is negative four, we have six times negative four squared plus 50. So again, why are we doing this? Why is this okay? Because uh, remember, this expression here is an identity in S. So no matter what S is, uh, this is always going to be true. So if we plug in helpful values of S, we can find A, B, and C. And yes, there are other ways of doing this, but this is usually the way that I prefer. Um, it's not really too bad. Uh, I mean, it's not really much better or worse than the other method of expanding all of this, equating the powers. You're going to end up with a linear system in B and C to solve anyway. So uh, We'll get there one way or another. So uh, then we have 8 times negative 4 squared plus 4 plus b times negative 4 plus c. And then negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So uh, negative 4 squared is 16. 16 times 6 is 96. 96 plus 50 is 146. And then we have 8 times what? Well, negative 4 squared is 16. 16 plus 4 is 20. 20 times 8 is 160. And then uh, this now we have a minus the quantity negative 4b plus c. So let's uh, subtract 160 from both sides. And then we end up with negative, that's going to be 14, equals negative negative 4b plus c. That's a c. So what we could do is uh, divide both sides by the negative 1 here. So that becomes positive. That becomes positive. And then what we end up with is c equal, or sorry, c, uh, let's say it like this, 14, 14 equals c minus 4b, c minus 4b, okay, so that's what we have here, so we have this equation and this equation, so we have a linear system in c and b, so let's go to page 4 and solve that, so 10 equals c minus 2b, and 14 equals c minus 4b, 
Now, if we subtract these equations from each other, then we're going to get negative 4 equals no more c's, so that's good. Negative 2b minus negative 4b is negative 2b plus 4b, which is 2b. So 2b equals negative 4, which means b equals negative 2. And if b is negative 2, well then 10 equals c minus 2 times negative 2, which means 10 equals, that's a 10, uh, c plus 4, that's a 4, and that means c equals 6. Okay, so we have a equals 8, b equals negative 2, and c equals positive 6 in this expansion here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to page 5 now. So what we have is uh, y of s equals 6s squared plus 50 over s plus 3 times s squared plus 4. And then that equals 8 over, where is it? 8 over s plus 3, because remember a is 8, so we have 8 over s plus 3. Okay, because a was 8. b is negative 2 and c is 6, so we have plus uh, negative 2s plus 6 over s squared plus 4. It's so negative 2s plus 6 over s squared plus 4. Now, what we want to do is take the inverse Laplace transform to get our original y of t back. So um, let's go ahead and split this up into uh, three separate fractions to make it easier for us to use the inverse Laplace transform. So what we have is y of s equals 8 times s plus 3. And then this is going to be plus negative 2s over s squared plus 4. And then we have uh, plus 6 over s squared plus 4. Okay, so now uh, what we can do is take the inverse Laplace transform of all this. So inverse Laplace, and then inverse Laplace. And because the inverse Laplace transform is also a linear operator, we can just do the inverse Laplace transform of each of these terms one at a time. Okay. And then on the left-hand side, we're just going to get y of t, which is exactly what we wanted, right? Because we're solving for y of t, so we get y of t. And now here, what we're going to do is look at tables for the inverse Laplace transform. Now this, because we can pull the 8 out, this is a linear uh, operator. Let's go ahead and go to page 6 and show the details. So the inverse Laplace transform of 8 over s plus 3 is equal to uh, 8 inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 3, which is 8 times e to the negative 3t using tables of uh, inverse Laplace transforms. So this is 8. Oops. 8e to the negative 3t. And then what about this one? We have the inverse Laplace transform of negative 2s over s squared plus 4. Negative 2s over s squared plus 4. So here we can pull out the uh, negative 2. And we have negative 2 inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus 4, which is going to be negative 2 times the cosine of 2t, or excuse me, x. We're using x for our variable, not t. Uh, sorry about that. So we're going to make this x, x. So this was an x, and this over here is an x. So negative 2 cosine 2x. So uh, this t over here is also an x. Minus 2 cosine of 2x. And then one more, the inverse Laplace transform of 6 over s squared plus 4. So that one's going to be inverse Laplace transform of 6 over s squared plus 4. That's a 4. Equals, we can pull out a factor of 3 from the top. So we're going to have 3 inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s squared plus 4. And looking at a table of inverse Laplace transforms, uh, we see that this is going to be 3 times the sine of 2x. So then finally we have uh, plus 3 times the sine of 2x. And that's our final answer. So y of t, and also that's y of x, not y of t. So we have y of x equals uh, 8x, or sorry, 8e to the minus 3x minus 2 cosine 2x plus 3 sine 2x. So this has been an example of using the inverse, or the Laplace transform and the inverse Laplace transform to solve a differential equation. 
Um, so we see it's a pretty lengthy and evolved process, and we really want to be uh, familiar with the standard Laplace transforms, and if, uh, especially if we're not allowed to have a table handy. And we also have to be comfortable with uh, partial fraction decomposition. So I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.